Look, I love the performance, I love the cool features, but I still think it's kind of impractical. Yes, this is what exactly what people have been saying for the ROG phones. I mean, there have been complaints around the ROG phones not having the flagship features, not having the best cameras, but impractical has been a keyword and that's been mostly due to the big, big size of these phones. Well, this is the new ROG Phone 8 Pro and you know what? ASUS has fixed it. First of all, we have the top of the line ROG Phone 8 Pro Edition and comes in this big box that includes the phone, the very cool case, this pouch with the new Aeroactive Cooler X, the PD charger, the C2C cable and the fun unboxing mission which works with NFC. Now, this is what the new ROG Phone looks like and it's a big, big change. This does not look like the ROG Phone whatsoever. It's got a new camera design, this new texture on the back which feels very nice and premium and there's some cool easter eggs. And it has a mini LED display on the back that's so seamlessly integrated, I love it, and it can do so much. I mean, it's 341 programmable mini LEDs, that's super cool. It shows animations when gaming, it shows you incoming calls, the charging status, your notification count, it works as a visualizer when music is playing, it shows you different animations for different camera features, you can use it as an AOD, and you can even add custom text to it, it's totally customizable. Now, if you look at the ROG Phone 8 Pro and the ROG Phone 7 Ultimate side by side, I'm not sure which one looks cooler, let me know in the comments. But one thing is for sure, the RG Phone 8 Pro is way more practical. It's way slimmer now, 8.9 millimeters thick versus 10.49 millimeters, 225 grams versus 239 grams, and the whole footprint has been reduced. So it feels way better to hold and carrying it in your pocket is not weird anymore. I mean, it's still a big phone, but it's not impractical big. I mean, it's clearly more in line with other modern day flagships in terms of size. The ROG Phone 8 Pro even lets go of the big bezels on the front, so it looks like a modern day smartphone with an edge to edge display. Now I'm sure you're wondering, this new design must compromise all of the cool ROG Phone features, right? Well, not really. The ROG Phone 8 Pro has the air triggers on top and they're slightly bigger now and they remain super responsive with amazing haptics in games. There's still the dual USB-C ports. The bottom one is a USB-C 2.0 port with hypercharge port. The second one on the side is a faster USB-C 3.1 Gen 1 port with 4K display port support, hypercharge support, and yes, these ports still support pass-through charging. And this port also supports the new Aeroactive Cooler X, which is also smaller and lighter. And let's go of the built-in subwoofer, but it's said to have a larger cooling chip and it's said to be more efficient. I mean, the opening for the fan cooling that we saw on the ROG Phone 7 is gone, but there's a new impressive conductive cooling system and the fans still seem to do the job. Plus, the cooler still has RGB lighting. It has two physical buttons that you can map in your games. It has a 3.5 mm jack, the USB-C port, and it even has the kickstand, which makes it all super convenient. Apart from that, the ROG Phone 8 Pro has the in-display fingerprint scanner, which I think is perfectly placed. I mean, I like the scanner to be placed higher than at the bottom, so this is good. Now, the ROG Phone 8 Pro does miss out on the front firing speakers. I mean, there's one speaker here on the top, one at the bottom, but ASUS has tuned it in a way that feels front firing. I mean, the sound output is 50-50 from both the speakers and they're very loud and they in fact sound more crisp and more detailed than the speakers on the ROG Phone 7. Yes, the bass is kind of less than the ROG Phone 7 speakers and the bottom speaker kind of gets a little muffled when playing games, but I'm okay with this change because the big bezels are gone. The ROG Phone 8 Pro also brings the flagship features. This has the IP68 rating and it is impressive considering the multiple ports, headphone jack, air triggers, whatnot. This also has wireless charging now, which is great. The display is still E6 AMOLED with a 165Hz refresh rate, but the brightness is now 2500 nits at peak, and this is now an LTPO display, although LTPO is limited to 1Hz to 120Hz. That apart, this is our flagship grade display. It's super smooth, has HDR spot, and you get very nice colors, deep blacks. But one area where this display still kind of falls short is the fact that this is an FHD display. I mean, for a flagship, you can't expect a QHD display. Anyway, the cameras too get a flagshipy update. The main camera has been updated to a Sony IMX890 sensor, and it has gimbal stabilization, which is really cool. The ultra wide end camera is now a freeform lens, so it'll handle distortions around corners better. And now there's a telephoto lens here, which does 3X or optical zoom. I mean, a telephoto lens was a big miss in ROG phones, especially with the flagship price tags. So this is great. I mean, it was high time and the main camera with gimbal stabilization is also a welcome upgrade. Now the camera samples are still under embargo, so I can't show you how these cameras perform, but yeah, on paper, very flagshipy. Now one area where you can say that there has been a little compromise is the battery size. It's 5500 image down from 6000 image, but I don't think it's a big deal. ASUS says it does not hamper battery performance thanks to the efficiency gains of a Gen 3. Now the ROG phones always the best specs and this has the new flagship Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 processor. But what's insane is that the top of the line variant, the one we have, comes with 1TB of UFS 
2.0 storage and 24 GB of LPDDR5X RAM. Yeah, 24 GB of actual RAM, no virtual RAM crap. Yeah, these specs are insane. And add to that the X mode that boosts the performance even further. Now, I'm sure you want to see the benchmark scores, but that's also under embargo. But if I talk about the performance in this phone so far, it is what you expect from an ROG phone. I mean, games like Genshin Impact run super smooth at the max settings, and there's barely any heating. Now, in terms of software, the ROG phone, it comes with the latest Android 14 on board, which is great. But what's not so great is the fact that ASUS is only promising two OS updates with four years of security patches. I mean, three OS updates would still be fine, but two is... Anyway, the software experience is great. It has a few apps like Facebook, Spotify, Link to Windows installed. But other than that, it's a super clean experience. And it has the super cool Armory Create app that lets you control everything about your gaming experience. And there are some new AI features too. There's AI semantic search in the app drawer. There are also AI features in games like X. 2.0 that lets you auto pick up fast forward running log etc to games like Genshin Impact. There's AI Grabber which lets you copy text from games or any other apps. The ROG Phone 8 Pro also supports full-fledged Microsoft Phone Link which is nice to have. Look to conclude things I remember saying last year in our ROG Phone 7 video it's high time Asus launched a new ROG Phone that has all the gaming wise but in a more user-friendly package and that is exactly what they've done with the new ROG Phone 8. I mean this brings everything you expect from an ROG Phone the power pack performance the cool features in a design that's more practical, more daily driver-like. Add to that, this is all the flagship features that have been missing in the ROG phones. So this is the ROG phone that kind of redefines ROG phones. It's no longer limited to gamers or people who want a secondary gaming phone. Look, I think the ROG Phone 8 Pro is a great upgrade, but I want to know from you, what do you guys think of the new ROG Phone 8 Pro? More practical? Comment down below. Thanks for watching.